So we all have old computers lying around. I have this 2015 13-inch MacBook Pro. And the question is, what do you do with this old tech? You don't want it to just lay around in a closet collecting dust. Sure, you could try to sell it. In this case, this is a very old computer. Nobody's really gonna buy it. So what do you do if you have this old tech and you wanna make use of it? Because there is some good potential horsepower in this thing, right? Like it's not completely useless. This one happens to have a broken screen, but hopefully yours is in fully functioning condition. My idea for this video is to turn this into a Mac server to control all of my modern day MacBooks. So this is an M2 Pro MacBook. This is the workhorse of uh, my life. Basically to turn this 13 inch into a Mac server to manage wireless time machine backups from my main Mac, along with a kind of like a network NAS. Uh, I don't want to make it, what did I say network NAS? I kind of, NAS means network attached storage. Just to make it my own personal cloud if I want to move files onto that server, keep archived video footage for YouTube or maybe even photo backups. But I want a network drive and I think this is the perfect device to do so. The time machine backups is also what's gonna be, like that's, that was really what I wanted where it's like, I just wanna back this up anywhere in the house and it'll just automatically back it up. So I hope that works. Not only that, but we're gonna install Plex because why not if we're making a home server out of an old laptop, we might as well load Plex onto it and obviously get every single one of the video files legally. We have to legally own every single movie or TV show, right? Right, hey, right? First thing we need to do is in my case, I gotta hook this up to a monitor, but I have some gear to build this out. And towards later on in the video, if you guys are interested, I'm actually gonna mount this along with the enclosure that I'm hooking up to the underneath of my desk. So if you're interested in that build, that's gonna be later on in the video, but right now, we're gonna get to the technical on-device stuff. Ideally, you won't have to do this, but I have the Mac set up in clamshell mode in order to get a piece of software that allows me to remotely access it from my actual MacBook. So I'm gonna show you guys how to do that right now. So there's a few different apps you can use for remote access. One that I've used in the past is called Rust Desk. So this works really well. Any app or any computer that has this app downloaded will be able to be accessed through Rust Desk's um, app. So I'm gonna go ahead and download it. If you guys have an alternative that you like, let me know in the comments below. I've used this before, it works well. It's meant to live kind of in the background, but if I need to do something, I have access to it remotely. Another piece of software we obviously need is Plex. So I'm gonna go ahead and set that up as well. And this is the first time I do a Plex server. I think it's very doable for most people who've been around electronics in, uh, you know, most of their life. So we're giving that a go. I'm gonna go ahead and download the media server for it. And I'm gonna get one more thing. That's the sponsor of today's video. That's Moonlock. So Moonlock is an antivirus for your MacBook. And or your Mac in general, not just your MacBook. The reason I'm getting it on the server is because it offers real-time protection that will constantly scan in the background to make sure no threats are getting through. It also offers dedicated malware scanning and a VPN, so if you want extra privacy, that's built right in. It's super lightweight, and I've been using it on my M2 MacBook, where is it? My M2 MacBook for a while, testing out the beta, and it runs really well and you barely even notice it's on. The reason I want an antivirus on the server is because it's always gonna be running, so I want the most possible amount of protection to make sure nothing gets through. I'd also recommend if you have older parents that aren't as tech savvy and you're the guy that they always call for tech support or something, that having Moonlock on their Mac would make your job and your life and theirs a whole lot easier because now they'll have that protection, that real-time protection that makes sure that they don't get themselves into trouble. So if that interests you, please use the link in the description. It helps the channel out a lot. And thanks to Moonlock for sponsoring this video and making it possible. So, okay, now that we paid the bills, let's go um, because it did cost me money to, I'm gonna show you the enclosure that we're building out and it, the, you know, we have to pay the bills. Let's get to installing Rust Desk. So we're gonna open that up and we're just gonna obviously drag it. This ain't your first rodeo. We're gonna drag it into the applications folder Right, you guys know what we're doing so far. And then let's go ahead and set it up. I'm also running El Dente on this because I want the battery to be capped. Since this is a laptop that has an internal battery, I don't want that getting damaged and having any safety concerns. So I'm running El Dente and keeping it at around 60%. So here we go, we're in there. We're gonna just follow along with uh, what it says. There's certain connections, certain privileges that we need to give. 
So let's go ahead and do that. This, uh, I'm sure this ain't your first rodeo, guys. So I think you guys know what we're doing. This is pretty standard stuff. So one more thing that I do on the server to make it as easy as possible is head over to Rust Desk where it says one time password, click edit, unlock security settings. You're gonna enter your max password and then you're gonna go down and then click use permanent password and then pick a password of your choice. And this is gonna make it so that it's only one password and it doesn't refresh because normally it'll just refresh and you're gonna have to go get the password and re-enter it every time. All right, so now heading into our main laptop, we're gonna go to Rust Desk, write the code of the Mac that we're trying to connect to, click connect, and then we're gonna have to enter the password. So let me do that. Remember password. And then here we go, we're in. All right, so remote access set up, but you might be wondering, how is this laptop gonna function if it's not on a display? And that's where this little gadget comes in. So this is a little dongle that tricks your Mac or Mac mini or any computer you have. It tricks it to, into making it think that it has a display connected to it. So you can run it headless and it will always be on, always thinking that it's connected to a monitor and you can prevent it from going to sleep. Anytime you need to remotely access it from Rust Desk or whatever other software you would use, you can do so and it's always awake, ready to go. All right, now that we have all the remote stuff set up, I gotta discuss the storage solution. I'm going with a dock here by May Wo. I think it's called. Maywo. yeah, I got it right. So this is a two bay hard drive enclosure. It supports RAID, which I'm not gonna be using, but if you guys are interested in that, it does support RAID zero and RAID one. To put into that enclosure, I got two two terabyte Seagate drives, and that's gonna be plenty of storage for time machine backups, media for the Plex server, and just any network storage that I want to use as like my personal cloud. Once you have your external drive or enclosure set up, because like me, you probably don't have two terabytes of internal storage, but once you have that set up, we're gonna have to head into the settings on the server one more time to enable sharing. So far, I hope I'm doing a good job of explaining everything, but let me know if you guys have any questions for anything I mentioned. All right, so to enable sharing, you're gonna go to your sharing menu, obviously, and we're gonna enable screen sharing because that's gonna allow us to remotely connect to the Mac without Rust Desk, just in case. I still prefer Rust Desk, but if you're just using this for local stuff, you might as well just turn this on. File sharing is the most important thing, so we're gonna enable that and then we're gonna go and add all of our drives. So I already partitioned these. So we're gonna go and select HDD1, add. Then we're gonna go do number two, there we go. Um, and then I'm gonna go ahead and add my time machine partition. So there we go, we have all these added. One last step to make sure the backups work properly is you're gonna right click your partition or your folder that your backups, uh, that you wanna back up to, advanced options, and then you're gonna click share as time machine backup destination. And then now we're all set. So now if we go in our MacBook, we're gonna see those drives under network and we'll be able to access them. So now on our main Mac to access the network drives or the Mac server in general, you're gonna click network and then it's gonna show up right there. Now to stream your screen or control it remotely from here, you could just right click share screen and then it'll pop up login information. And you can just get into there, but we're gonna open it and we're gonna see our files. So we got our hard drive partitions here and then we have all the other folders in the Mac. So if we just click this, we could see, well, there's nothing in here, but we could add and drag and drop stuff in there. And it'll also pop up on the side here, allowing us to click it and go directly to that. It'll wait till it loads, but there we go. We're in the second hard drive and we got our Plex uh, server files. So we could drag stuff in straight from here, straight from this MacBook. Now the time machine backups where it gets interesting. The whole idea of this server is to have remote time machine backups. So in theory, if I click that, there we go, and click time machine, and I set it up as a disk, time machine will, all right, let's uh, do this. I'm not gonna encrypt the backup, but that's up to you guys if you want. And I'm gonna click done. And now there we go, time machine just set up a backup location on that remote drive. So now this MacBook, anytime it's connected to the server on the same network, it's gonna back up on Time Machine and I don't have to do anything, which is a real good luxury to have, in my opinion, instead of just connecting a backup drive on there. Now, anywhere I am in the house, it'll back up. Also, the setup of Plex is super easy. All you gotta do is run the file, it'll open up a window, set itself up, and then you just have to point it to your movies and TV show directory, and then just drag in whatever content you want. 
Once that's done, you just download the app on whatever device you want, your Fire Stick, your phone, and then you log in with your Plex account and you'll see your server listed there. All right, now the server's up and running, we gotta construct a mount because I want this under my desk, out of the way, and kind of just a dedicated spot for the server. So if you're interested in that, that's what we're gonna be doing right now. If you're not interested in that, you can close the video right now and enjoy your server. And let me know in the comments below what you put on it and what you're using it for. Are you using it for backups, Plex server? If you're watching this portion of the video, that means you're interested in sticking around to see how I build out the mount. So I'm in my dad's shop. That's what we're gonna be doing. So since I have a standing desk, there's actually a rail running along it that has little threaded inserts. So I could easily tap into that by going to get some screws that are the same thread and bolt directly onto that rail. My idea to mount the laptop is basically just this. This is a top-down view. It's gonna be a V of steel. It does look like a 12-year-old drew it, but look, that's, that's good enough for me. So this is what I'm using for the MacBook mount. It's about a 1 8 piece of steel plate, one and a half inches wide, and this is gonna be welded into a V, and then I'm gonna weld a little bracket here that I could drill into, and that's gonna be mounted on the desk for the laptop. For the hard drive enclosure, it's actually a lot easier. I'm using a two inch piece of steel, and this is basically just gonna be a hanger, so the enclosure has two cutouts towards the top, so it's gonna just slide right into here. I'm gonna make two bends here, so it's gonna be a U, and then bolt it right there. It's gonna be easy, and well, it's gonna be easier to bend this than to weld and fit everything else, so we're gonna probably start with this. To wrap everything up, we're gonna paint it to match the gray of the desk. This is actually a paint that I used to make a hot wheel of my car, so I had this lying around. I thought this would be perfect. All right, now that you know the plan, let's get started. You gotta clean it well, or else the paint is not gonna stick well, so. Rubbing alcohol is a tremendous cleaner, so that's what I'm using. And that's normally what I use when I paint anything. And I haven't had an issue, but anyways, the point is you gotta clean it really well, get everything off, or else your paint's gonna look like All right, so while that's drying, let's get started on the laptop mount. All right, so I have my pieces marked up for the base of the laptop mount. Since it's a V, this is gonna be my angle. I'm gonna weld two of them together, and then I'm gonna have to make and weld a bracket so that this can be mounted to the underside of the desk. So I have all my pieces cut, prepped, and drilled. The idea is to weld this together to make a V. And then once that's done, this is the bracket that's gonna secure that V to the desk. And it's gonna be welded together like that. And then this is gonna be welded underneath there. And that's gonna make the whole bracket. So let's go weld this together and finish up the project. All right guys, I finished up welding up the piece. I cleaned up all the welds. Now it's time to hit it with some paint and then wait for it to dry and we'll try it on at home and install everything. Shake and bake. All right guys, so the paint's dry. I haven't tested this yet. So honestly, I hope my diagram and my plans and measurements were all correct. Gonna start with the hard drive. That one is gonna go right over here. Yeah, you guys can see. I'm gonna just start it by hand and then I'm gonna use my little mini ratchet. It's all strapped down, let's slide the enclosure on. There we go, that holds pretty good. Let's do the laptop now. All right, my holes were spaced properly. That's good, that's perfect. I think my mom would be proud. All right, moment of truth. There we go, that holds pretty well. It does hold pretty well. Let's connect all the cables and... All right, well that worked out pretty good. Everything's set up and uh, it holds. So I think that was a success. So there you have it. That's how you repurpose your old Mac into a Mac server. Ideally, if you could, it would be best to have a Mac mini or maybe even buy a Mac mini. But I really want to show you guys how to make use of an old laptop 
and kind of just breed some new life. Breathe or breathe? I, I f***ed that up. Let me know what aspect of the server you enjoy most in the comments below. Is it the Plex server part of it? Is it the time machine backups or just having a network drive to offload certain files or dump video footage or whatever you're doing? I'll also be leaving a link in the description to a wonderful Plex setup tutorial in case you guys have any issues, but most of you guys are probably tech savvy, so you won't have much problems with that, but I'm leaving a good video in the description just in case. Thanks for watching, hope you enjoyed and hope you learned something. And if you made it through the whole video to see when I made the mount, let me know in the comments below because that is the most challenging part of the video is kind of just fabricating the whole thing and being in charge of directing shots and placing the camera and stuff. So if you watch through that, I appreciate it. Let me know in the comments below and I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace.